Well, this morning we're, we're in a, a series that we've been in for the last few weeks uh, called our, our, just our core values. Our core values. We, we've wanted to, to be in this series because um, we wanted to really just share the why behind everything that we do. Right? If you ever had a, had a question on, hey, why are you doing certain things or why don't you do certain things? And, and we wanted to just kind of give you from us what we've looked at at Scripture just for Image Church. These are the why behind everything that we do. We've looked at uh, God dependence. We've looked at genuine community. We looked at generous living. And, and this week we're going to be really digging into growing leaders. Growing leaders. And uh, there's a lot of passages I think we could uh, um, really dug into, but the one that, that just really just got put on my heart is Matthew 9, 35. We're actually going to go past uh, uh, just chapter 9 and all the way for, to 10, 8. And uh, man, th- this subject that I want us to, to, to really dig into is just something I'm passionate about because um, just I believe with, with the Christian church, we're going to talk more about this, that, that every person in this room is a leader. And, uh, and you a leader, we're going to talk a little bit about what that is, but, but you have influence in people's lives, uh, no matter the, the youngest person in the room, or the oldest person in the room. Uh, I believe that everybody in, in God's church is a leader, and so we're going to be really talking about that, and so uh, I wanted to start off with that to show, hey, this applies to you and where you are, uh, and every person in the room. But I wanted to, to, to give a few quotes, because if you ask a hundred people, like, what is a leader, what is leadership, you'll probably get a hundred different answers. Uh, probably every person in this room has a different answer on what is a leader or maybe what is a good leader. We often think about, you know, what makes a bad leader. We've had some of those in our lives, right? If you've ever worked a job ever, you've probably had a bad leader um, in your life at some point. But I, I wanted to look at just a few quotes on, on some different people and what they thought a, a leader was. The first one is Napoleon uh, Bonaparte. This one was just in- interesting, is that a leader is a dealer in hope. A leader is a dealer in hope, right, that, that just brings joy to the people that they uh, have influence around. Harry Truman, he says, my definition of a leader is a man who can persuade people to do what they don't want to do or do what they're too lazy to do and like it. Uh, that takes a very special skill, right, to, to persuade people to do what they don't want to do or, or what they're too lazy to do, but not only to do it, but also to like it, right? Because I'm, I'm in the, the, the phase as, as a parent is I can, can kind of coerce, force my kids to do some certain things, but they ain't going to like it, but, but they might do it. So that's, that, was a, that was a good quote from Harry Truman. The next one, Vince Lombardi, right? One of the greatest football coaches of all time. The leaders aren't born, they are made. Leaders aren't born, they are made. And then John Maxwell, this is the, one of the, the quotes that resonated with me the most, that kind of jumped off on where kind of the, the leadership quote that I have is that, that a leader is, is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. And one of the things I think is very interesting about all these quotes is none of them have to do with a position. None of them have to do with age. None of them even have to do with certain experience. And so when I, when I mentioned earlier that I believe every person in this room is a leader, uh, I, I truly believe that even e- any, all of these quotes could apply to every person in this room. And so leaders at Image, when we're talking about growing leaders, what we mean here at Image Church is, is someone that is pursuing and growing with Jesus who helps others meet and pursue Jesus. When we're talking about, hey, we're passionate about growing leaders, we're passionate about people that, that, that know that pursue and grow with Jesus and that help other people meet and pursue Jesus. Right, so, so this, this happens just, just all across the spectrum. And this is what we're passionate about. We, we want every person in this room, you're on a journey, we believe, and you're all at different points on the journey. And we believe everybody has a, has a next step, right? And it's different for all of us. For those that are, that are further along the journey, your, your step's going to look a lot different than, than those that are just starting on the journey. But we believe that as leaders, we, we all want to want to help you grow and be able to take that next step, whatever it is. And so that's what we're going to be talking about uh, this morning and really looking in the passage of uh, Matthew chapter 9. Um, I really, really like this story. Uh, and, and it's one I pray a lot 
this Matthew 9 verse. So I'm going to start in verse 35, and we're going to read through the end, jump back to the top, and, and just kind of talk through these verses. So Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, it says, And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. And he called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the twelve apostles are these. <coughs> First, Simon, who is called Peter, <coughs> and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of De Zebedee, and John, his brother, and Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of uh, Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received, uh, you received without paying, give without pay. Let's pray just, just one more time. Lord, I pray that you just bless the reading of your word. Help us to, to learn from it, grow from it, and you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this is just a very interesting passage. There's a lot of things going on here. And the, the first thing I really want us to, to, to get from the passage and really dig into is that uh, we all need someone to lead us. We all need someone to lead us. In verse 36, Jesus comes to, to these individuals and he says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them. This, this compassion in the Greek, it really means like, like he felt it in his stomach. Like, like he, it, he was pained over what he saw. He was moved to action. He, he saw, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. There were individuals that, that, that weren't being led. They didn't have someone in their life that loved them and cared about them and saying, hey, hey, the path that you're going on, the direction you're going isn't the best way to go. And so I think just foundationally, the, the best place for us to start is, is, is with humility, is that every one of us needs someone in our lives to lead us. One of the things that, that's been most helpful for me on, on a church planning journey is, is I had leaders that instilled this into me early on. And so, so even now, as, as, a, as a pastor of the church, I have pastors over me that, that pour into me and say, hey, Ryan, uh, I, because I love you and care about you, I want to call you out on this area of your life. I, I want to help you go uh, uh, the, the best way that you can go. I, I don't want you to go down the wrong path I, I'm, because I'm concerned about you, because I love you. I want to help lead you. And we all need that in our lives, right? The, the devil wants you to feel like you've arrived, right? That you've made it, that you don't need other people's opinions or influence in your life. Right? The, the devil, he always wants to isolate us, to make us feel like we're alone and we have it under control and, and we know what's best. Right? And isn't that just the furthest thing from the truth? I mean, this is something that, that, that we don't see this, this type of, uh, this word compassion for Jesus, but a, a few times. And so when, when I do see, see it, I, I'm just very attentive. Like, what, what really moved Jesus to, like, say, man, my heart breaks for them. Right, I, I felt this about five years ago when I came to the city of Las Vegas for the ver very first time. And I got to see uh, and meet with a lot of different churches and see God doing some incredible things. But then I, I just saw just the people that my heart broke for. That I had this type of compassion for. Like, like it made me sick to my stomach that, that, that there wasn't more people doing something about it. Right? And God has that for us. He says, hey, hey, I, I want you to, to, to like humble ourselves to say, hey, we need people in our lives to lead us, to guide us, to direct us, to help us along this journey. Because like I said before, we're all on the journey, but uh, we need people in our lives, Titus 2 talks about, that, that, that are further down the journey to help us, 
Right? One, one of the best things that we can do is learn from other people's mistakes. Right? Well, we're going to learn from our mistakes. Right? They, they hurt us. They, we, we see them. But, but, man, I would love to save some of you some, some scars, some pain, and learn from my mistakes. And learn from others in this room's mistakes. And so one of the, the, the foundations that I wanted to, to start here, because one, Jesus' is, uh, passion on this subject but, but I believe also we just need to, to really recognize wherever we are, we, we need people to lead us, and we need to listen to leadership. We need to listen to other people in our lives. We need to listen to wise counsel. Scripture talks about it uh, just, just regularly. And the second thing that, that I think we really see in this passage, right, Jesus, he saw this problem. And if he, if he was like me, I would immediately, you know, be going to a whiteboard and, and, and mapping out my strategy to, you know, fix the problem. That's not what Jesus did, right? All of us, we, we deal with problems in, in different ways, right? Maybe it's we retreat from problems, or maybe you're just, hey, I'm a problem solver. Maybe my, your solution, hey, I'm going to go to sleep, and maybe the problem will fix itself. But what Jesus says, hey, we, we see this serious problem. There, there's these individuals that are, that are lost. They're like sheep without a shepherd. The only solution that, that we need to do first is we need to pray. Prayer is the foundation for leadership. Prayer is the foundation for leadership. Verse 38, it says, Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so one of the things that, that we like to do as a church, we, we've done it, uh, we've been meeting just somewhat infrequently for the last couple years and, and just consistently over the last couple months, but what we like to do on the first Sunday of every month, uh, which is today, is we like to, to carve out uh, even a little extra time in our service uh, to go to the Lord in prayer. And so it, it, I think it was just really special this morning that we're just even going to listen to the text. Right? The, the, the text, Jesus just says, hey, hey, you see the problem, uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. That's how we're going to fix the problem. Right? It's not, it's not by, by working harder. It's not by, by you doing all these things. It's saying, hey, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And so here, here's what I'm, I'm going to do in, in these next uh, a few moments is I'm just going to lead us in a time of prayer. I got I asked four certain things that we're going to pray for. Um, I know you're like, man, we've already prayed a lot. I don't think we can pray too much, right? And so we're, we're just going to, to go to our God, and I, I just believe just even access right, some of the greatest power in all the universe. It's talking to our God, and we're going to ask him some, some certain things. So if you want to just like go ahead and bow your heads with me again, and, and we're going to uh, go into prayer. I know this is kind of weird even for like a sermon. I'm going to not even talk and pray for some of this and just give you the freedom to pray in this time, right, to, to, to just uh, go after the Lord. And so th this first thing that I want us to pray for is your next step. Say, hey, hey Lord, I, I pray that you would reveal to me what my next step is. Or, or maybe it's, hey, give me the courage, the boldness to take that next step, to get baptized, to join a group, to, to, to begin reading my Bible faithfully, to memorize scripture, to, 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 to help lead my family better, to, to lead my kids, to invest in my, my marriage, to, uh, to reconcile with, with a friend, to whatever it may be. Say, Lord, show me my next step. Help me take it. I'm, I'm going to just allow you to just pray, you and the Lord, for just a moment. Second thing I want us to pray for is just growth as a leader. Say, Lord, wherever you've given me uh, influence, maybe it's as a parent, as an employee, as a boss, as a neighbor, Lord, just, just help me to grow as a leader. Grow my capacity, grow my influence. Just pray that now.
I want us to pray for what the text called us to pray for. Pray for more laborers. Pray for more laborers at Image Church. Pray for more laborers in Las Vegas and in our country, across the world. More laborers that are serious about Jesus, serious about their faith, and, and, and compelled, compassioned to, to make a difference. Pray for more laborers. Lastly, I want us to pray for the harvest, the people that don't know Jesus yet. Pray that, that, that God will meet them where they are. Lord, that, that the harvest would be taken care of. Lord, that, that us even as, as laborers, we would make a difference in the harvest. Pray for the harvest. Lord, again, I thank you that you hear our prayers. Lord, and I believe in Ephesians 3.20 this morning that, that you're able to do more than we could even ask or think. And so, Lord, everything that was mentioned this morning, everything that was prayed up to you, Lord, we're praying even more than that. Lord, that you would uh, blow our minds with how you're making a difference in, in these individuals' lives with their next step as they grow as a leader, Lord. I pray that, that you would blow our minds in how you're bringing more laborers to this city more laborers to, to the nations. And Lord, I, I just am trusting you to do big things. Lord, we love you. We honor you. And Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Man, thank you for just, just taking that time. I just think it's just one of, one of the most important things that we can do this morning, right, is just spend time just, just praying as, as a church. And that's why one of our, our, our first core value is, is God dependence. We depend on him for everything, not just some things, but everything. And so prayer is the foundation for leadership. The next thing that, that I just really see in this passage, and I've already talked about, is that we are all leaders. We are all leaders. What, what I love about this is before he sends them out, he says, hey, let's do a little roll call here real quick. Let's talk about the, the 12 disciples that, that Jesus was sending out. Right, you, you, you would imagine that as Jesus is sending out individuals to, uh, to really just take on the world, you would think of like, like the religious elite. Right? You would think like the best of the best. I want to go through the list of guys real quick. Peter, he, he was a hot-headed, uh, low-educated fisherman that denied Jesus. And he died a martyr. Andrew, another fisherman. We have four fishermen in the list. He was the brother of Peter. He was the son of thunder. He was a disciple of John the Baptist. That's all we, we really know about him. James, uh, again, a fisherman. He was quiet. He was Jesus' closest friend. He was the first martyr. I mean, he was the first guy to die for Jesus. And John, another, the last fisherman, he was the one who Jesus loved, wrote five books of the New Testament. And these are kind of the, the, the most elite of the group. And then we, we go on to Philip. He was a Jew, and that's literally all that we know about him. Bartholomew, he was, there's even a passage, one of the only passages about him, is, is, it shows his prejudice against Nazareth. He's a guy that says, could anything good come out of Nazareth when, when hearing about Jesus? <laughs> he, uh, he may have took the gospel to India. We don't know for sure. He was martyred. Matthew, he was a tax collector. Tax collectors literally just imagine if ISIS took over the United States and, and Pat said, hey, I'm going to take taxes from you to pay ISIS. And not only am I going to take the 50% I'm supposed to, I'm going to take 70% and keep that 20% for myself. Right? That, that was a tax collector in that day. 
one of the most despised people in all the world, betrayed their own people, took the gospel to Ethiopia and Egypt. He, he was martyred with a spear. Thomas, he was, uh, was no, most known as a doubter, started a church in India. He was martyred by, by a spear. And we have literally the other James. Um, we don't really know anything about the other James. Simon, the, the zealot, he was a political activist. He was the guy doing all the, the Facebook memes about uh, the right wing and left wing and all those things. He, then we have Thaddeus. Again, we don't know much about Thaddeus. And, and then even Judas Iscariot, the traitor, the thief that, that was stealing from, from the ministry that, that Jesus was doing. And it was these 12 guys that Jesus said, hey, I'm, I'm sending out to make a difference. Like these guys were leaders. And so if there was ever a time to give us confidence that, that hey, hey, we're all leaders in this room, it's, it's, it's here in this list of people. Like God said, hey, I can use any of you. I think God often wanted to use the people that were despised in the world, that, that were seen as lowly, to say, hey, I'm going to show you how big I am. And show you how I don't need you, but I'm going to work in and through you to make a difference. And so wherever you're at on your journey, no matter how old you are, I believe we're all leaders. One of my favorite stories of, of the last uh, few months is as, as Miles came and shared to me and said, hey, uh, my son Eli, after hearing a sermon that, that he learned about at church, got to talk uh, about prayer with some of his classmates. And that was so cool, Eli. And what was, what was awesome is Eli didn't have to be a, a professional on everything on the subject of prayer. He just had to know a little bit more than them. Right? And he said, hey, uh, I, I don't know everything, but I can tell you what I do know. Or that, that's what a leader does. It says it, we, we, it knows the way, it goes the way, and then it helps others go that way. Right? As, as a parent, you don't have to know everything in the world uh, when, when it comes to Jesus, when it comes to the Bible. You just need to know a little bit more than them. I just, hey, you just read your Bible that day, and then you could teach them something that you read. I said, no matter where we're at on our journey, like we are leaders making a difference. One, one of my favorite things recently, we have a four-year-old that um, one of their favorite things to scream is that Jesus wins. And so anytime that, that they hear Jesus, they're going to also respond with wins, even if that's not the right answer. Right, but, but I remember being out somewhere and, and somebody was saying Jesus, but like using it like, Jesus, like, you know, like not how we should. And they just said, wins, <laughs> right? They're like, I'll finish it for you. Right, but, but even my, my four-year-old could, could lead a 40-year-old in that moment. Right, because when we're talking about things of the Lord, when we're talking about, hey, hey, uh, uh, leadership is not about your position. It's not about uh, even your amount of experience. It's not about your pay grade. It's not about any of th those things. It's about knowing Jesus, pursuing Jesus, and helping others to do the same. And if that's the case, then we can all be leaders in this room. That's what we're passionate about, about growing leaders. Because God can use you. Even if you just have uh, influence and leadership over one person, God can use that and wants to use that. And so just, I just want to encourage you, like, uh, if you're a parent in this room, maybe you're thinking, man, I don't have any influence. Man, you absolutely have the most influence in, in, uh, in certain people's lives, in your kids' lives. Right, lead well there. As an employee, we can even lead up to uh, a boss or, or other employees, co-workers. Make a difference. Lead well for Jesus because we're all leaders. And the last point that I just really see in this passage is just make a difference for Jesus. I've mentioned this all throughout, but I, I just want to make sure that, that we leave on this, is that make a difference for Jesus. In, in verses 5 through 8, he, he tells these disciples, right, these misfits in society. He says, hey, go, go heal the blind. Go uh, help the sick. Go make an incredible difference. Go see the people that are alienated. Uh, go invest in them. Make a difference. 
And, and why I believe that is just so foundational, what I want to leave us with is because even as, as leaders, if we make um, people that are, are productive members of society, right, that have good manners, if we lead people in that way, if we teach them right from wrong, if we do all these things and we just make them uh, better humans but not people that love Jesus, we've made them uh, better humans on their way to hell. We want to really make a difference, and the way we really make a difference is we make an eternal difference. And a difference not just for the next 40, 50, 60 years, but a difference for the, for the rest of eternity. And the way we do that is pointing people to Jesus. And so what I want us to, to leave with this morning is wherever you're at on your journey, whatever group you may or may not have, have influence over, I want you to think of, hey, how can I make a difference for Jesus? How can I point people to Jesus? And maybe for, for you, your first step is to, to, to take your next step. Say, hey, I need, I need to grow so that I can teach someone else. Right? I, I need to go a little bit further down the journey so I can help bring someone else along. Maybe I need to go into some, some spheres of influence. Maybe I need to uh, be more invested into the relationships that I already have. And help and, and grow them because we are passionate here about growing leaders. And I believe every person in this room is a leader. And so I'm going to pray in just a moment. We're going to sing another song here. But it's really just an opportunity to respond. And I just want to say, there's a few ways that, that you could respond this morning. Maybe it's just, hey, you're going to respond and sing. Maybe you need prayer. I would love to pray for you. Maybe you're saying, hey, I'm struggling. I want to take my next step, but I'm scared. I would love to pray for you. Maybe your response in this time is saying, hey, uh, I, I believe that, that I've been trying to do this whole thing on my own. I've been trying to just make a difference, but it's been for me. Uh, just know that this morning, God wants more for your life. God loved you so much. So this, this is the best news. He loved you so much that he saw you in your sin. He saw you in your mistakes. He saw you in your failures. And he loved you so much that he sent his only son, Jesus, to die for you. And then to be ro risen from the grave three days later to show his power over sin and death and the grave and all your mistakes, all your failures. And today you could begin a relationship with him. Right? You don't have to do this, this life on your own. You can do it uh, with Jesus. And so maybe that's your response in this time. Saying, hey, I'm tired of trying to do it on my own. Lord, Jesus, I need you. I would love to even help you in that. And so I'm going to pray in whatever way that you feel like uh, you need to respond. You have the freedom.